Hi, it's Leela Viss of 88pianokeys.me, and I'm in sunny, warm Colorado with a colleague named Thomas Hoops, and I got to hear Thomas Hoops uh, last summer at uh, Rockley's Music Center, and he gave a presentation, and I could not get enough of listening to Thomas. And so I thought it'd be wonderful to have him here in my studio and to share a little bit of his huge, vast amount of knowledge about music learning theory. So please tell us a little bit about yourself, Thomas. Hello, my name is Thomas Hoops. Um, I am a piano teacher. Uh, lately I've been specializing in the little ones. I did my undergraduate work at Texas Women's University and my graduate work at the University of Texas at Arlington, and that is where I was introduced to music learning theory. I had intended to write a thesis paper, she says, take the certification course and tell me what you think, and I was just floored. It made all the connections, everything I felt I had been missing in music, it just connected everything, and it, it was uh, really amazing, and it forced me to really examine my musicianship, it forced me to really open up and just be able to learn new stuff, and essentially it was the simple things that I just hadn't done before, simply improvising, things like that that too many piano students don't get to do before we start formal lessons, and especially notation, reading. So let's step back just for a second. So you were headed towards a master's degree in piano performance? Piano pedagogy. Pedagogy, okay. Mm -hmm. And then instead, Someone said, wait. <laughs> and I had never, I would never have even wanted a six-year-old in my studio. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started doing research on how the little ones learn, how much we're learning even before we pop out. There's so many things that we're learning. As we, When we're born, we're just a fresh hard drive. And we can, nice. our aptitude is still pliable up to age nine. So I have been focusing strictly on aptitude and less achievement. After age nine, then we can focus on more achievement, learning these pieces, getting these accolades. But while we're still pliable, while the little ones, and I, I just am enthralled at how amazing the human mind is. And we all do these steps. It is the same steps as we acquire language. And common knowledge, we're all capable of a mother tongue. So of course the first step is listening, and then the second step is babbling or imitating, mama, dada. Third step is speaking, fourth step is reading, and then writing. And the same with, with music, of course the first thing is listening, and the second step is, is singing, uh, then some improvisation, then reading and writing. And I think too many times we don't allow the students a sense of just playing these notes and learning the instrument, especially with the piano, because it is a machine. We are not touching the vibrating piece. We are not, we are removed. We don't worry about intonation, right. Right. but we can have harmony. So that creates a whole nother. So there's a lot of things that piano teachers have to become aware of, especially training music in the mind, because there's a lot of things you will not get from pushing those keys. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of singing and a lot, of, a lot of movement to make sure that the students have a good grasp on these conceptual ideas. Got it. Okay, so let's now, now we know why you decided to change your course <laughs> and you decided to become a music learning theory specialist. So tell us a little bit more about what that means. Well, music learning theory is a sequence. It is based on a sequence, and it is also based on audiation. I think we'll leave the audiation for another okay. uh, talk, but essentially audiation is thinking musically. Mm -hmm. um, one of the language vocabularies before we, start, before we start writing is speaking and then thinking. As we speak, we no longer think about our letters. We no longer think about the words. We think about the idea, and that's the whole concept of the music learning theory is to give meaning to what we're playing. And again, if we just push keys and it's always ever been that, then we never give that meaning to the music. So the first step um, in, in music learning theory is oral oral. We say something and then you repeat it. Student repeats it. A simple rhythm pattern might be ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. At first, it's just listening and just building a vocabulary. We'll talk about duple meter later. We'll give them syllables later. But the first step is just listening and repeating, becoming familiar, 
building a vocabulary. You will only be able to make as, as many comparisons as the familiar vocabulary that you already have. So that first step, and again, as piano teachers, we are, we, we are expected to have that book by the first lesson. We are expected, and, and a lot of times I will sit and talk with the parents and say, this is what has to happen. Fortunately, there are a lot of parents that took lessons and didn't get it and said, I took eight years and I don't know. Well, because we never put this step in front of it. So um, there's some, some parents that really, really understand it and some I have to kind of coax through it. And then once they see how the student is progressing, then they really understand, oh, that's right. We have to do this here before we do it here. Um, my, the next step is the verbal. Let me, let me stop you right there just to make sure that everybody's clear. So you're saying oral. O R oh, it's oral, oral, so here, yes, here. oral, here, okay. and then, and B -B. then say, okay, got it. And it. these are all neutral syllables, even when I'm doing the tonal patterns, bum, 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 bum. Everything is a neutral syllable. We'll go through tonic, dominant, I can do all kinds of patterns, all kinds of different stuff, just to build a vocabulary. Just what do you mean by neutral? Doesn't a matter. neutral syllable. Until we start assigning something, until I say it's a do, it's just a note. It is just a pitch. It's just something okay. I've seen. The same with feeling these rhythm patterns. It's just something I feel. Okay. And we will talk much more about the movement part of it. Okay. Piaget says, put it in your body, you will never forget it. Okay. So that's what I really do. Yeah. The second step would be the verbal association. Okay. That's when we start, after they become familiar with these patterns, then we start assigning them syllables. Do, day, do, day, do, da, day, da, do. Do, day, do, day, do, da, day, da, do. And, the, and we will use the standard solfeggio, do, mi, so, do, mi, so. Gordon uses fixed, uh, uh, movable dough okay. with a law-based minor. So as we go through all of our flavors or tonalities, yeah. we hear them, the students will already hear them and identify Lydian before we even know that's fa da fa or okay. uh, So let's just go, let's stop there just for a second because when you say all that, I'm like, oh no, I'm not doing that. Do I have to learn that all? I mean, do I really have to plug into the whole solfage system? I mean, am I a bad teacher if I don't do that? because I probably won't do that. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to give you some exercises and some okay. activities to get started on it, and I felt that same way. And as Ed Gordon said, don't change anything. This is not a method. This is just a sequence. Once it started making so much sense to me, I realized I have to do it this way. Okay. There's, there's not another right. way. There are so many different rhythm syllables, but the Gordon syllables uh, concentrate on the beat function. Do is always the big beat, macro beat, no matter what meter I'm in. I'm always okay. feeling and saying that do. So uh, the next part is, is partial synthesis, and that's when we're putting this together in our mind. I might give the student, I might say, listen to this pattern and identify if this is a duple meter or a triple meter. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Duple or triple? I felt like that was triple. A do, do, day, do, day, do, 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 Okay, yeah. So things like that, and that is a little bit of inference because they have to think, but identifying duple and triple, identifying, being able to pick out those things from hearing a, a, the same pattern. Right. And that's I was really used to hearing you do that. So uh, I, yeah, we haven't done any time right. I threw yeah. that out at you. Right. But the whole the whole thing is is the first part of the theory is discrimination learning. I might be jumping right. in a little bit early. But discrimination is simply knowing what something is and what something isn't. Yes. And I think that so, is so crucial. Same difference. I think, well I, yes, and I found that early on. There's so many students that it's not that the student doesn't understand or doesn't want to understand. There's that fair concept where I've had a student, we were learning notes, and she kept getting around, getting around, and she was associating the top part of the stem oh, as where the yeah. pitch was. Right. And there's, I mean, if you haven't, if you've never seen music, I mean, why would you not do that? It's just, there's just so many ways the, the well, brain thinks. And I think that's the brilliant thing about that discrimination. It's either yes or no, right? That's all you're asking them to do. And I was just reading Robert Duke's, Duke, Robert Duke's book. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. He has said this over and over, start from scratch. Every lesson, start from scratch. 
And again, we make too many assumptions a lot as teachers. We assume they know something, right? Nowadays, especially, children don't sing like they did. There are right? so many things yes. that we are expected, uh, we are expecting them to come in and already have these skills, and they may or may not. And it's not a hard thing. Again, it's like the mother tongue. Every human is capable of music. Every human has music. So it's not a hard thing. It's just understanding when to apply it. I've had a lot of adult students, myself included, that picked this up. And I will say it was not an easy thing to do. It really forced me to question a lot of things I was doing, question my musicianship. But I had uh, an, an older gentleman, and he was late 60s, very, very good shape. He was able to bounce on the ball. Okay. The minute he felt that, I mean, his eyes open up, his jaw drops, he felt it. And he was one of those guys that, I can't dance, I can't, you know, right. I was like, well, Bob, right. we, we got to do this. If you want to yeah. play in time, the minute he felt it, he internalized it, much like balance on a bike. These concepts we can't teach. We have to set up the rich learning huh. environment and the student yeah. grasps it. And that's uh, like bouncing on the ball. Right. So it, internalizing a steady beat, I like that, making it equivalent to riding a bike. It is a concept, yes. Um, I think the way they're teaching that word is an action noun because it's not a thing and it's not a, it's not a verb, although it's a thinking thing, so it's kind of a verb. They call it an action noun. Action. The concept would be an action noun. The concept of a steady beat. The concept of balance. The con because okay, a fail. I see. Yes. Okay. Concepts, ideas right. of things yes. are action nouns. Got it. So, okay, are we jumping ahead? Or did a we little bit. We are, okay. We've gotten to the partial synthesis, and then okay. after partial synthesis, after you can identify, you've gotten a rich vocabulary of these, then we move into symbolic association, and that is the notes, seeing the notes. I have all kinds of different different ways and different uh, activities to start that without even reading standard notation, like what you've done here with the beats. With the beats. We can take, yeah. we can feel a beat, we can visualize triple duple, we can even um, manipulate that, we can hear that. We still haven't looked at music. So by the time we hear all this, and that's when I love introducing music when the student says, I can play this, or oh, here, here's here's old Joe Clark, or here's this, I can play this, and okay. Here's what it looks like on the music. Nice. And yeah. I think taking that approach is so much more beneficial than just pushing the keys and, and just learning, you know, press this finger, press this finger. And there are some students, it does, it does take them a little bit longer to tonicize. <laughs> Me as, as, as a male, I, I can sing in my falsetto, but I shouldn't. And it forces my students to really uh, accommodate uh, Accommodate for that uh, octave displacement. Okay, so they right. really got to yeah. hear when I'm singing yeah. and when they're singing. Um, I do the same for the male teachers. I have my I have a cow and uh, my duck puppets. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I, this is what I was so fascinated with is because I'm a huge off bench fan and I love toys. I'm sorry, slash manipulatives to teach. And yes. you seem to be the king of manipulatives. So well, here we go. Yes. And <laughs> again, everything I do is purposeful. Yes, right. It and may be yes. informal, but it is always As a purposeful. purposeful. Yes. And we learn through play. We right. learn. All the animals do. So Indeed. for the for the men I would have here, you can be done. Okay. So I'll sing in my rhythm patterns in my in, in my man voice, and I'll explain to them I'm going to be the cow, and you can be the duck. Especially using those vocal bulls that are not the do de do the do re mi's, they get they have fun with that. I'll sing moo moo moo, and you'll sing quack quack quack. Right, right. moo 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 quack quack quack. Sometimes I do moo moo. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that to engage them. Okay, yeah. And okay, now, do they, how, how long does it take for them to do what I just did? It all depends. Okay. And that's another thing. I, I don't know if you saw this at my workshop, but I keep really oh, right. yes, notes. Yes, you do. You keep very good notes. Because yes, the do. concept is one of those things you get it or you don't. Yes. So before we ever focus on a skill, we need to nail that concept down, then we can start working on the skill. Okay, so let's stop there. Mm. Because that was, and, and maybe I'm stepping back a little bit more than just the concept versus the skill, but that was one of the things that really caught my attention is you made a big deal of context versus concept. And now you want to talk about concept versus skill. So Con concept and skill 
yes. and context and content. Okay, yes, so okay. there, thank you, yes, yeah. okay, so let's, can we go there for a minute? Sure, okay. sure, sure. Um, the context and the content, of, uh, I mean the con, concept yeah. and skill. Yes. The concept would be the idea of beat, to feel the beat. Okay. And I, you can ask the student to give you the definition, you'll have as million definitions as there are kids. Right. Again, it's a concept. What does chocolate taste like? What does blue look like? It is so subjective until you internalize okay. and feel it. So I'll have students and I'll get them on the ball. We'll do essentially jump rope rhymes. We'll do basic rhythm patterns. We'll do a pattern training on the ball. We'll do lots of, sometimes I will chant the words to a song before we start uh, with, with the melody of the song, okay. just to hear this and feel these words. Um, once they internalize that beat, and I'll say, what's it be? what my tummy feels like when I'm on the ball. It's, okay. it's just it's me bouncing. And I was like, perfect. That, that, that's how it should feel. Once that is internalized. That's a concept. That's the concept. Okay. Then we can start working on rhythms. Then we okay. can start working on it. And again, the entire time, I'm still giving rhythms. We're still singing songs. Mm -hmm. We're still listening to music. But then a small part of it will be analyzing this or working on this section of this, or this one rhythm okay. pattern, this one tonal pattern. It's called whole, part, whole. We'll do the whole song, we'll work on one little section right. of it, okay. and put it all back together. Okay. So the concept is of a steady beat, that's a concept, and then... The beat, feeling that beat. Feeling that beat, that. and then moving into a skill, then? The skill would be the rhythms. How do we apply okay. those rhythms on top of that? How Got do we... Um, one of my favorite activities is to give them a rhythm pattern and we go over this rhythm pattern over and over and over a few minutes until they've internalized it. And I'll say, go to the piano and play that on, on one black key. Mm -hmm. Or go to the piano and play that on, play your five finger position, play just to get that rhythm that's already established onto the keys without yeah. thinking of the keys first and then, and then grading it second. So um, that gets into the audiation of internalizing music. A lot of the students, I'll do this thing where I'll, sing, I'll say, don't sing anything, but just tell me if you can hear the last note of my musical mm, sentence. I like this one too. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Right, you felt compelled to sing even yeah. though I told you not to sing. And students will do that. Oh, okay. Two of your own can hear where that's right. going. Right, again, that's audiation. Right. You not only anticipated that, you knew where I was going. Yeah. Even a two-year-old will hear that five-one. That's that's pure right. physics. Pythagoras figured that out a long time ago. But yeah, that that acculturation. We hear where that goes. You anticipated that note. You knew, and even the little ones can do that. So that essentially is a taste of audiation. So if I can audiate the rhythm, I can audiate the harmonic progression. I can audiate the melody of all this. Once I do all all that at once, then. That I play so those are all kinds of skills. Those are all we, the skills that we lay on top yeah. of a concept like a study. Yes. So now you've been pointing to this ball, and this was one of the things that I was so curious. I couldn't wait until you showed us what you do with this exercise ball, and that's why we're in exercise clothes today. So yes, uh, show us this, this, because I think this is brilliant. This was introduced to me by Richard Schuster at Texas Women's University, and uh, it was one of the first things that got me thinking about movement because as we give lessons we say okay float your arm this keep your back straight but until you understand why you're doing it it's it's, it's like okay I'm doing this but my plan is this you know what hold it up just so everybody can see because it's a little I need to blow it up a little bit more <laughs> it's flat it's actually it's okay for what we're doing and okay. I have some they're called peanut balls they're made oh. for little kid gyms again I work with a lot of little kids so okay. it's small enough for yeah. them to get on Unfortunately, because it is small, it makes the beat a lot faster. But as we right. talked, their heartbeat is a lot faster. Yes. So we've got to keep up. So that, with okay, that's the whole thing. But anyway, um, I may um, have them bounce on the ball, and for a student that is really, really having trouble, I'll say, just bounce and feel that. Count me 16 bounces, count me 8 bounces, so they can become aware of how this feels. Oh, okay. And then we'll start chanting some simple, simple poems. Hopefully something they're familiar with, twinkle, twinkle. Everything has to be in duple meter, just one, two, one, two, right. one, two, yeah. up, down. And then this gives me a chance to explain upbeat, downbeat. This gives me a chance to, for them to feel, before I explain, it gives them a chance to feel this. So we'll just keep talking, we'll say uh, rhythm, how to try it? I love the idea of upbeat, downbeat. That's it, right there. Oh, yeah, right? 
It's exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, I love this one. It's called Fish Alive. And you okay. can just listen to this. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger. So which finger did it bite? The little one on the right. So we say that until it becomes familiar. Here we can do a little bit okay. of that. Uh, we'll say it together, yeah, and then I eventually know. I'll say, <laughs> I, I know we're going fast. <laughs> but I'll eventually with the student, I'll say, I'll start it, and you give me the answer. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Right. We'll go back and forth, and then I might say, let's take the words out and just do that on a ba. Ba, 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 ba. We'll go through that, okay. feeling it, talking about it, and say, that's rhythm. That's the rhythm, how okay. it goes on the beat. We've isolated those two. We felt the beat by itself and the rhythm separately. Mm -hmm. Even though in music they're never separated, right. as we teach that, we should keep those separate. We can keep those separate to isolate what the beat is and how that functions right. and then the rhythms. Nice. Well, I, I was almost ready to put this on a garage sale, <laughs> and then I saw. Well, and even for the more advanced students, oh, bouncing huge. on this yes. for, for tough passages, oh, yeah. um, when I was learning it, uh, well, in the past 10 years, I learned how to play jazz, and it just okay. finally hit me yeah. when I started audiating. It's like, oh, get rid of those notes. This is a sound. This is right. And yeah. bouncing on this, it makes you play in time. And yes. I can always ask yes. the students, you know, do you hate your metronome? Yes, I hate my metronome. Okay, well, let's just bounce on this. Right. Oh, exactly. Because you have to internalize it. Once right. you've internalized it, again, like the concept of balance, you feel it, and it's like, oh, that's how it goes. And even if you don't take anything away from NLT, if you don't want to immerse yourself in all of it, just, I, I had a student who was just not feeling a diet half you know, just <laughs> didn't feel it. And so, and he was, so I had him bounce and play at the piano at the same time. Yeah. And it was magic. It was like overnight, it all connected with him. Mm -hmm. Because finally, he locked into his internal beat. I don't know if that's would be a word, but then, you know, he found it, it to me, it you know? And so I didn't give him, obviously, the landscape that I could if I was doing it uh, the NLT way. But it's, it's never too late. That is right. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. The movement is, is yeah. a huge thing. In, in MLT and with again with the piano, it is a lot of work. Well, movement and then singing and chanting, and so this is really a neat idea because a lot of people don't like to sing. You know, I know I was one of them. I was one of them. Okay. And even in my undergrad, I had to sing, and it was still I was doing what I had to do. I went to a school that did fixed dope. So the D's and the Da's were just like, ugh. <laughs> so I got the music learning theory. It's like, no, it starts here. This is always dope. Do is always major. Do, mi, so, mi, do is okay. always major. La, do, mi, do, la. It's always the minor. So then when I started thinking of that, it's not a matter of black keys. It's a matter of, oh, this is half step. This is a whole step. Understanding the function of it before the instrument. Right. So it, 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 uh, it really forced me to listen a lot. And that was one of the things that I didn't do, and I think we were talking about this, you learn your tonalities, unless you grow up playing jazz, tonalities are, those are the medieval church modes, I learned that right. in theory right. two class in college, you know, sharp the floor, flat the... And there was, no, there was no reason why we had to learn them. We just had right. to learn them. Exactly. So I've got, I've got uh, a song, so we'll have to find my pitch. This is the Phrygian tune. Um, I will dance with an elephant, or we'll do some kind of movement, but it's in Phrygian. Way down south where bananas grow, a grasshopper stepped on an elephant's toe. The elephant said with tears in his eyes, pick on somebody your own size. Singing these simple yeah. songs on all white keys. I can right. go through all the flavors, and I prefer to introduce the different flavors without ever getting to those black keys. So then when they come time, I'll say, why don't you start uh, Elephant and Grasshopper on the G? And they'll play, and they'll get to that first, where's that black key, and then instantly change it to the, to the flat or the sharp, whatever the case is. And I think learning it that way makes 
such a greater impact than having to see it in the music. And I see that so many times teachers have to put the sharks in front of right. anything that's sharp right. yeah. because the, the, the student didn't learn that language before they learned how so, to play it. So, I mean, a lot of this is a playing by ear skill, you know? It is exactly. When you want to teach students how to play by ear, it's letting them sing it, letting them hear it, and then getting them somewhere to start. Yes. And then going from there. We have to do it that way. It hasn't been that many years since the skill of improvisation has sort of dwindled. Back in the old days, when you went to see Beethoven play, you went to see Beethoven do his quotas. You went to see, I mean, even now, when you see a pop band play, I'm expecting a guitar solo that's oh, right. not on the album. Correct. <laughs> Although some people are disappointed when it's not on the album. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's like that. And that, that improvisation is, is the foundation of it all. That's so like the children going to school, by the time they get into, into kindergarten, they're expected to at least have some sort of a grasp on their mother tongue. A little bit of understanding of syntax, you know, nouns, verbs, things like that. They're expected to have that before we ever start reading and writing. And so we need to start doing that as We need to do that as teachers. We need to have, and I know that Music 23 has really outlined all of that. And so for us who are like, oh my goodness, now what? How, are we, how, how can I do this and still do what I'm doing and feel like I'm still successful. And, and from a personal standpoint, I feel like anything that I learn, I try and incorporate, even if it's, I would, I would call it too late. I'm just glad I have the tool now, you know, mm -hmm. because it makes teaching easier. So, uh, you know, I, I know you have so much to share and you have some fun little things here. So why don't you share us some more tidbits that, you know, even if we can't immerse ourselves in music um, reading theory, show us some other things. This is going to be, I'm going to go very quickly. When okay. I introduce a song, depending on the age group, again, everything is so dependent on musical age and chronological age. And even with a chronological age, most five-year-olds should do this. Most seven-year-olds. There's the gamut. Of, okay of the way people think. This song here, this is your okay. elephant. I've got a lot of silly elephant songs. Okay. And I tell the students that. We're singing yeah. silly songs. I'm not a singer. As long as I can hear what's going on in your brain, we're not grading your singing. We're not being singers right. in here. So that really takes a lot of pressure off. And that takes a lot of pressure off of me because I started off with piano. I did not start off as a singer. And with most boys, when our voices start to change, it's like, oh, I'm never going right. to sing. So Frank. Right. So this song is, it's in my paper, and it's called Pickles and Pie. Oh, yeah. This okay. tune is in Mixolydian, and it's, oh, well, let's show it. Here's our elephant. We'll start off. I just want you to listen. So okay. this is your elephant flying around. Make his trunk. Let's hear his trunk. Mm -hmm. All right, you stand up with me. We're going to take big elephant beats. Bah, bah. So we're still feeling our beat, and we're flying all around the room. And here I go, me, oh, my, pickles and pie. I see an elephant in the sky. Me, oh my, pickles and pie. How did an elephant learn to fly? We're engaging the beat, we're engaging your musical brain, but still allowing this to move freely. I will do this on different areas. Again, wow. this gets back to the body awareness. I do lots of balance exercises and lots okay. of so we'll go through this in a few a few uh, different areas. Why would this be good for them to be put on their put on their body like this? Just because balance and body awareness is so oh, important, and that's another thing that they don't get at home and might not get at school. Right. Some of the newer PE departments are working on more functional movement rather than competitive movement. But when we learn to walk, every baby, hands off, I go. I might be doing it wrong. I might be right. doing it right. So we. Don't take time. So uh, a lot of in the music learning theory, this body awareness, I do things with heavy and light and soft and, and flowing smooth and, and bound flow. Because when you say play loud, it's the amount of weight that's going into right, the right. key. Yeah, yeah. So things like when we push this ball, this is a giant, this is, let's yeah, pretend like this. So anyway, um, this one, I don't find my head to get. <laughs> this is a great one for Mixolydian. Because I want you to sing the ostinato. Again, this will be weeks of me explaining. Yeah. <laughs> 
always seem to know the tone at the end. But that was reinforcing. That ostinato was bum, 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 one, seven, one, the Mixolydian, right? Yeah. Um, they can hear all that. It is amazing. Right. Now, I want to I want to talk one more thing because I like this idea. So why would they put it on their shoulder then? What would you do with that? I do this and it? say, let's make the, these are all movement away from the piano exercise. Okay, yeah. A lot is a lot of repetition. So just to get them to sing the song again, I'll say, oh, let's put it here. Oh, let's do this. Oh, Can I you see. balance this okay. here? Got because it. I'll go through the song and introduce it maybe once or twice just me singing. I might go into the little beats feeling this. I might ask them, oh, for the little, little kids, I'll do this. I'll say, give me the last word of every sentence of this song. Here we go, me, oh my, pickles and pie. I see an elephant in the sky. Right, I wish I wrote that one. But yeah, okay. that gives them a chance to audiate without having to perform. So they're right. still audiating, running through that song until it comes to their word. Right. Um, okay. Then we may sing the song. We can take the words out and just do the melody. We can talk about mixolydian. We can talk about the, the tonality of the flavors. Okay. We can take the words and the melody out and just say, ba, 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 If a student is particularly having trouble with rhythms or that beat thing, I'll say, let's do pickles and pie on the ball. Mm -hmm. We'll take out the melody, we'll take out the notes, and let's just do the rhythm patterns or say it, me, yo, my, pickles and pie. And all of this is, is training each one of those bare elements of music. Right. So when we put it all together, so when they are playing at the piano, do you use these at the piano? Because I, I do. My brain is turning about these uh, because I already use something to help them feel the weight of their arm. Um, but it would just be an interesting thing. What what I liked is the idea of re repetition too. Oh, just absolutely. Just changing something up yes. just a little bit. Yes. A new challenge in their bodies, and then it it makes them want to do something again. Yes. Right. So it's yes. kind of a little trick, really. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, have a, a student, I had a student the other day. We were doing a, a Sam the Butcher. Now. I don't know if there's a little The little two-year-old is on mom's lap, and she starts singing. And yeah. I'm over here with, with the five-year-old, and we're doing this song, and, and the, the little two-year-old spontaneously breaks out and to Sam the Butcher. Now. You know? And, and I, I, that's the way I believe it should happen, organically. Right. Organically. And I always encourage the younger siblings, to, they can join it. This little two-year-old still has to get to know me. I, I, I can be a little much at first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not the uh, traditional. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have some other toys here. Will you show us? A, I love the, the, yeah, the bungee cord. I don't know, whatever you call that. I think that is so cool. This, this is... I gotta get one of these. Bum, 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 bum. I explained the Volga Boatman. I explained a little bit about folk music. This is a Russian folk song. These are guys pulling this big boat. This gets into the Laban effort element of bound. So when you tell a student, oh, this feeling, this music has a feeling of this, they don't know that until we feel it. So I'll sing this song and say, let's pretend like we're pulling a big boat. You can just listen. And here I go, yo, yo, heave, ho. Oh, yo, yo, heave, ho. So pull together, forward still we go. Bum, ba da dum bum That gives me a chance to see. Did that sound like a happy song or a sad song? What is a sad song? I won't use the word minor, but I will use the flavor, and I'll say, oh, that's a sad flavor, just to introduce the concept of tonality. Mm -hmm. I find, especially with the boys, they love pulling this. I'll say, let's have a tug of war. Let's pull this. Now we're really pulling this big boat. Yeah. Oh. What I think is really cool about this, though, too, is when we were doing this, if I was going faster, you could slow me down. Right. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, so they're feeling that. They're feeling that. But you're not telling them to slow down. They, right. they will just feel it. Yeah, and that no, these are great. You know, you you have to feel it. That's it's one of those things. And I asked the students, "Can you ride a two wheel?" And I say yes or no. And I said, "How how'd you learn?" I just did it. I said, "Did Dad tell you how to do it?" No, I had to do it. So I, that's how I explained. The same thing here. We got to go through these moves. We have to feel this bound feel. I have another song called Witch's Brew, and it's very popular this time of yeah. the year. But as we add these ingredients into the soup, I'll say, now the 
The soup is getting really thick. Let me hear that in your voice. Stirring and stirring and stirring our brew. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so as we progress, it gets more ingredients. I'll start saying that, and that emphasizes the bound feel, that laban bound feel. So these things, when we say, oh, these. You know, the Tarkovsky strings have this so passionate, sad, bound right. feeling. Yeah. They'll Let's have see. an idea. Okay. That is in yeah. my paper. I go through the effort right. elements. Okay. Um, he has flow, which is free flow and bound flow. He has weight, heavy and light. He has time, fast and slow, and he has space. So what would the float be? What would be the opposite a, of bound? A, a flow, this is another one I love. Oh, yeah. This is called continuous fluid movement. Okay. If a student exhibits trouble learning a beat, what this continuous fluid movement does is it allows the student to isolate this, uh, to feel the space without necessarily feeling the time. We're mm -hmm. still engaging our singing voice, but this just allows more of a floating feeling to allow the brain to put it together. So let's sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I want you just to conduct figure eights. And here we go, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. <laughs> My eights were getting kind of mixed up. <laughs> the two, well, and that's the thing with the little kids, it allows them, and, and on some songs I will design, I'll take a song, and it's not particular about what uh, flavor or tonality it's in. For a little kid, I'll have maybe a four measure song. And, and of course, the, the, the exercises might be a little bit different. But then I can always customize each activity to what they need. I'll look in the book on their first lesson and say, oh, yeah, I still have a minus by uh, beat function or by tonicization. This kid still doesn't hear that tonic. So we need to hammer mm -hmm. this today. We need to. So, and again, the concept. You get it or you don't. So once I check that they've sung that yes. twice in a row, and then so now explain so this. How is this different than bound? This is free flow. This is free flow. And I might ask the student, say, "Tell me, how does that move? How does this look when it's oh, it's floaty, it's it's slow, it's floating, things like that." Because then you can say, "Okay." This is how this this melody floats. This okay. is all right. these are all given. So this is a, as much as a, a rhythm thing, then as much as it is a yes. It is a basic basic. It is pre rhythm, and that is the okay. whole importance of that continuous fluid motion or continuous fluid movement allows them to be doing something while engaging the brain, ah, and then okay. eventually. And again, I think it gets back to body awareness. The the students that can't do this, I'm surprised. There's kids that can't stand on one foot. And I understand okay. there's there's a lot of things going on with right. what goes on in PE at school, but I know they don't go out and jump rope. They don't do a lot of things that they should be so doing. So in some ways, you're keeping them busy doing something. That is and exactly what it is. Them so that they so that you can teach them the next thing or introduce the next thing in some and it does right? it, it, especially with the kids we have so much going on they mm -hmm. have so much going on right you can't tell them to sit still and, and listen right. to this as we get older as we age baby moves big muscle motions mm -hmm. and then four five six years old they narrow this down to these fine motors mm -hmm. fine motor motions this I still have to inhibit. So my brain is going through a process of inhibiting these muscles so this can work. All that energy still has to be burned. So the nice. child has to move, right. have to move. And I'm surprised about even when it feels like they're not paying attention, they really are yeah. when it comes to right. music. Yeah. I'll have kids on the whiteboard and they're drawing something and I'll have a rhythm pattern, even, and I'll, I'll get them. I'll say, give me something different than this. Ba, 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 ba. Think about, think about it, and they'll give me a different one. Yeah. Again, we've had to have gone through so many right. become familiar with something. That's but then also, you can start seeing them display a steady beat through this as well, right? Maybe they won't have one, but eventually you'll see them. It does, right? and I can use this as I can still use this right. for, and uh, the kids love the scarves. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, I got, yeah, I, got, I can I got, see all kinds of reasons why. Oh, I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Streamers, scarves. I have some of those, yes. All and I've used toilet paper before. Yeah, they're not because I didn't have enough scarves. So toilet paper does work. Um, and it's, uh, I don't repurpose it though. This is one <laughs> quick trick that I have. I, I love this exercise. 
I call this the mystery bottle. That's fine. And I always put something different in it, and I say, don't take that up. I mean, again, listening is essential, even if it's a non tonal right. How many things are in there? One or more than Two one. Two or three. Right, multiple objects. Yes. What do you think they're made of? Sounds like plastic or wood. Something hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that slowly and tell me if that rolls. Does that slide? What do you think the shape is? Mm. It sounds like it's sliding. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we can go through questions wow. and questions of yeah. just listening, and then at the end okay. of it, I'll, I'll open it, and it's nuts and bolts. I can wow. put little erasers, okay. I put yeah. keys, uh, all kinds of different things. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it to stuff That's that fun. they would recognize. Because, and again, you know, they may come in and say, I don't want to play piano. Right. So having all these extra yes. things that are still focused on music, right. they're still progressing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I actually even look forward to those times because, again, we don't spend enough time singing. We don't spend enough time doing these, these extra things. So if, if they don't want to play piano immediately, it's like, okay, well, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. We have other, other ways right. to learn. Okay, so I'm so curious. We didn't get to uh, introduce... We weren't introduced to your doll. You this gotta, is, gotta, again, I've been specializing it. in the little ones, and to make a child do something they're not physically capable of is, is it's horrible. It's horrible. I use the Play-Doh. This is an initial thing on some of the, fir the very first lesson. I'll say, uh, here, take this. I want you to roll this up in a ball with just your fingers. Uh-huh, squish it, and switch hands. Just use your finger. Well, yeah, uh, they take all day. We're speaking yeah. up. I mean, a little kid will just sit there. I know, yeah. I mean, and, and it's like sitting in traffic. Right, right? Yeah. Right, right. And they'll do that. They'll, if okay. I can see, if they constantly grab it with this other hand, okay, we've got to work on that. We're at this level. Right. And this is called a... Yeah, we're the, testing right now. Uh, finger skills. I'm just looking nice. at because nice. if the brain is the first thing that understands the music, I'm focusing on that. But then I don't know how much piano I will actually do. Will it be 10%? Will it be 20%? Okay. When do I introduce them to that? When are they ready for that? Okay. So things like this. This is the zippity doo dolly. She just has all kinds of different. Oh, you got to put her up. <laughs> she has a buckle, a button, snap. Velcro zipper tie. So just to see, and again, this is for the this is for the little kids to see them. Yeah, but I know. Like I have a big huge doll. Like, so. <laughs> I bet there's some other kids that would. Oh yeah, yeah. She, 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 she has multiple purposes oh, right, in the yeah. studio. So yeah, what do you do then? You just have them. You test their fine motor skills. Yeah, so this is just for me to to make an analysis, to evaluate and see. Oh, can they well, tie that? Right, right. Way? Where do we need? Where yeah. do we need to be? Interesting. Uh, you know as well, we get so many students that may or may not have touched the piano. There may be a student that right. has been singing forever. Mom and dad play the piano. There's a tuned instrument in the house all the time. And there's right. some students that sign up and say, oh, yeah, we'll get a piano. We'll see if she likes it or not. So there's just the So in a nutshell, because this, this could open up a whole other thing, is when you see a child that cannot roll a ball with Play-Doh, what does that tell you? Then where are you going next? I'm spending more time on the audiation. I know that it's too early for the instrument. Some I of the see. books okay. that I start okay. with, I will do closed hand positioning. Mm -hmm. There's okay. still always, always, always a certain percentage of time at the instrument because I'm still selling piano lessons. But I think of it more as music lessons through this instrument. And of course, that's why we take piano. I mean, even right. if it's not your primary instrument in college, everybody has to take piano right. Right. for that reason because it just lays out the, the musical scale. It's just, and it's such an easy instrument to play. It is. It is. So that's you why they like, and it makes you sense. push a key, it makes a sense. Yeah. We never worry about intonation. Right. Maybe there's so right. many things. So right. that's so you're teaching the whole student. about music. The whole, yeah. Yes, the body yeah. and the mind. Body and the mind. And then leading towards an instrument. Yeah, and by the time we get to the instrument, these things are so clear and easy. Yeah. Um, I have this nephew, and I don't know if you're familiar with the Strider, these balance bikes. And this balance bike is a little tiny bicycle without pedals. So from oh, right. two to okay. three, he yeah. just pushed himself. Okay. Yeah. Before his fourth birthday, he got on the regular bike pedals, and boom. 
He's gone. Oh, wow. Never. Okay. So and no I, training wheels. No, no training wheels. Yeah. Because he isolated the concept of balance. Right. And I remember him growing up. He's like, oh, look, look, bomb, bomb. I, I, I can, I can lean. He'd say, I'm leaning, I'm leaning. And yeah. I could see him when I ran my bike at Cherry Creek. I could see. I saw this kid that was just awesome. I asked the dad, did he learn on the Strider? He yes. sure did. So you, you can tell that yeah. that natural, that organic, right. they own that balance. And the same with these concepts. If you own triple meter, it doesn't matter if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, 12, eight, nine, eight, you're just feeling right. That opened up a lot of doors for me with multimeters and makes everything so much easier right. just to think of the twos and threes. And right. Again, I never thought of it before. Yeah. It's like, Top number means this, bottom number means right. count one and two and counting those counting numbers have nothing to do with yeah. the feeling yeah. of beat. So if we take the time to, to get these concepts down before we see them in the music, then literature flows. We are just right. learning piece after piece. And the improvisation is it, it allows them to be free and, and confident with, with their instrument and their skills. While you were speaking my language, <laughs> we could go on all day, I could tell yeah. you, but we probably should put it uh, to a close here. But thank you so much you. for thank joining you. me. And I know that a lot of people are going to be really interested in hearing more of what you have to say. So stay tuned. We might have some uh, more Thomas Cooper appearances coming your way, uh, perhaps in Denver, but maybe um, through another video. But thank you so much again. I know you have so much to share. and. Uh, you mentioned the paper, which I have a copy of this. Is there a way? Uh, do you share your? Oh, I absolutely do. Okay. It's uh, it's unpublished. I, I, I don't even think I ever shopped that one, but I will be glad to send. Uh, well, a we'll, do, we a, we'll have to make it. Well, this will go along with the blog at some point, and we'll make yeah, sure that you to that. share it. It's very nice of you to do that. And um, I got a copy of this. For I know you put that on your blog. And right? so uh, this is a great book to get under the hood slightly slightly uh, because there's a lot of vocabulary in here to uh, comprehend there is on on the gimmel website g-i-m-l dot org gordon institute of music learning under the ed gordon tab there's a an article he wrote called untying bourdain knots and mm -hmm. they are simple one paragraph articles nice. on okay. each one Ooh. There's 85 of them, but right. there's, there's, it's a okay. real short, and like you said, it's just enough to get you thinking about right. oh, that's what audiation is. I think that's, you know, at, at this point, I, I never want to feel discouraged in what I'm doing. I always want to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And if there's an idea that can enlighten what I'm doing, and if I can find a tool that's going to help a student, that's where I'm at. So that's why I'm so happy that you're here is because even though, man, I wish I could go back and do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, all right. I can't. But even using some of your ideas, I know it's going to be beneficial. Oh, yes. To my students. I do practice on the ball all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, you do yourself. I, oh, I have yeah. to. I, I just have to. I mean, there's yeah. stuff that I mean, I still I want, I so want it, to. So, yeah, it helps your skills along with your student skills. And So, I thank you again for watching, and thank you, Thomas, for joining me. And again, stay tuned for more Thomas. <laughs>